What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Damn, son, where'd you find this? back from our month-long break one piece 1087 is out and oda as usual delivers another schmanger right he went to go get his eye surgery but at the same time you always have a couple of chapters in the tuck so this chapter probably all the way up to 1089 we're done pre-break if anybody's looking for any differences now that his eyes are corrected you won't see that until 1090 but at the same time I wouldn't expect to see too many differences anyway when we get into it. Oda is still very consistent in his artwork regardless. For this analysis, part that I want to focus in on is just the relationship of Garp and Kuzan. And kind of the timeline of that, what we've seen from Garp and Kuzan, and why we're at this moment, and what the flashback and everything that we're seeing here tells us about these two characters to begin with. All right, here we go. But first, like, comment, subscribe. Feeling the vibe. We were first introduced to Admiral Aokiji almost two decades ago in the Long Ring Longland arc. He served three purposes. The first one was escalation. We had just taken down Crocodile. Now, eventually, we were going to take down the Marines, and here is one of the top three powerhouses in that particular organization. Two, he was set up to platform Robin as we were entering the Water 7 and his lobby saga. He was there to show us the danger of Robin, and his particular danger is what amplified Robin's danger and the tension of the saga that we were entering. But the third and most underrated thing that Aokiji brought to the table was just telling us about Luffy's grandfather. He's the first person to mention that Luffy, like most people who are born, has a grandparent in the first place. We don't necessarily have the context that Luffy's grandfather is a Marine, right? Just that Admiral Aokiji owes Garp a favor. That's what comes out in this fight that they have. It's why Kuzan does not kill Luffy when presented the chance. And we still don't know what that favor is. Is the favor just training him, or is there something deeper that we may see in 1088? That is something that I would really love to get into. A deeper flashback. What we're dealing with here is Kuzan is a complicated character at this time because we don't know where he lies on the spectrum of everything. He told Smoker that he's still the same Kuzan, right? He's still, I'm the, still the same me, but it's easier to see the world from outside of the Marines. Kuzan tells Garp that he has a habit of creating enemies, creating formidable foes. The people that he allows to get close to him turn against him in a certain way. And if you really look at that image when he says that line, Kuzan is crying. There's tears that are starting to like kind of ice up as he's saying this. And there's so many layers here because it's like for so long, the theory has been that Kuzan is a part of S.W.O.R.D., that he's still secretly working for the Marines. But what are we dealing with here from a pop culture standpoint? Like, is this Snape kills Dumbledore? Like, is Kuzan here to, to kill Garp and, you know, make a show out of it? But, you know, maybe he doesn't really kill Garp, but then Blackbeard shows up and, like, you know, Gurr Gurr double taps the, you know, the ice time capsule that Kuzan makes of uh, Garp. Like, that's the most tragic scenario that, you know, comes out of this. Or is this, like, an... Obi-Wan versus Vader, New Hope situation. You know, hey, you were the chosen one. You know, of course, that's Revenge of the Sith. But the idea that they're having this fight and Obi-Wan is an old man now. And once 
his protege, his new protege, right, is able to see what's going on. He allows himself to die because that's the catalyst for Luke Skywalker in that situation for those who have seen Star Wars, right? So there's a situation where Garp dies. Both of these situations involve Garp dying, uh, which is a very likely scenario with the way that things are being set up. A lot of Marine Ford parallels, like even to the point where at one point when you see Kobe, Garp, Prince Gruss, and, uh, and Helmeppo, Kobe is in a very similar stance to Luffy and Ace when they were standing back to back in Marine Ford. Garp gets stabbed like Whitebeard did with Squard here, which is Oda's way of damaging Garp and showing that he's not at his full potential. So if he dies, it's because Shiryu got a cheap shot on him, right? But if Kobe is there to watch all of this, the new protege, the one that is going to really reform the Marines when all is said and done, the true version of what Garp has wanted from a protege to begin with. Going back to the, you know, the relationships that Garp has with certain individuals, Garp himself hates the world government, but he still works for the world government, right? He is a walking contradiction, which is why I've always wanted Garp to be the leader of S.W.O.R.D. or the inspiration for S.W.O.R.D. He hates the Celestial Dragons. He didn't want any promotions. Kuzana's always looked up to this man. But this attitude that Garp has, he can't fault anybody but himself if everybody that he comes in contact with and his, you know, magnanimous energy rubs off on other people and suddenly they don't trust or like the world government anymore either. His son, the leader of the Revolutionary Army, aiming to take down the world government. His grandson is one of the four emperors of the sea right now, which are definitely against the world government. And now Kuzan is a crew member, a commander for an emperor against the world government. And yet he has Kobe who is still working within the government, but in a faction of the Marines that I still believe is anti-government. So, <laughs> like, I want you to be a strong Marine. I want you to be a strong Marine. You have to be a Marine. You have to be a Marine. Luffy's stance on freedom is no different to me than the way that Garp moves through the Marines, the way he doesn't take promotions. That is something that Kuzan gravitated to as well. It may be what led Dragon to lead the Revolutionary Army. Garp has imposed this ideology of freedom to his pupils and family. Garp isn't creating enemies for himself as much as he's creating clones of himself in a way that are really living out his will to the fullest. If Garp isn't leading sword, if he isn't leading the charge against the world government in the first place, like his anger and attitude towards the world government, which I'm sure we'll get into when we get to an eventual God Valley flashback, is only amplified and presented in these proteges and family members that he has because they're taking action where maybe he won't. There's a sadness to all of this as well because the relationship that we've seen from Kuzan and Garp has always been pleasant. It's always been fatherly almost. Kobe is like a grandson to Garp. You know, because I mean, he's still in the same generation as Luffy, right? But Kuzan is in the same generation as Dragon in a way. So it's like Kuzan is the, the son that Garp had that went about everything the way that he wanted. Dragon went off and is doing his own thing, but Kuzan is the one that, that stayed. And something happened in those two years that changed that. and. We still don't know what that is for, for Kuzan. Was it the war? Was it the fight with Sakazuki? Did he learn something else about what's going on in the world government that is putting him in this position? Is he not secretly part of the government anymore and actually really believes in Blackbeard's motives? Like, what had to happen to get Kuzan to this point if he really is about this pirate life right now? At the end of Eni's lobby, like we have Garp 
and Kuzan hanging out and being buddy buddy and leaving that that island together. This man was his son. This is every character. We see this time and again. Luffy and Shanks. Shanks is Luffy's real dad, right? Like, that's the guy that he looks up to. That's the guy that he's like, I want to be like him. Not my dad. I don't know my dad or whatever. But this guy, this guy was, he filled that role for me, right? Sanji, not judge. He's not going to be a warmonger. He's not a scientist. Like, I'm going to be a cook like Zeph. I'm about what he's about. Chopper and Hero Look, Ace and Whitebeard instead of Roger. The most prevalent theme in One Piece is like just the the adopted dads. Guzan is the Luffy to Garp's Shanks. Like that's the relationship. It's the adopted dad trope, and now they are scrapping in a similar way to Luffy eventually scrapping with Shanks. You know, like if that happens, like it's this, it's gonna have the same feel here. So everything says like, hey protege this protege that like i want you to look at this chapter and when you see garp and Uzan like punching each other in that classic anime fashion you know like even a call back to dory and brogy hitting themselves with the shields this man is punching his son i guarantee you garp has spent more quality time and maybe even just more time literally with kuzan than he ever did with dragon and in the past two years, he's probably spent more time with Kobe than he ever did with Luffy also. There's also a psychological aspect to this as well, because uh, a lot of just people, you know, maybe you in your own life have, have dealt with this, where some people, they, they have a psychological reaction to their parents. Like their parents would be like, hey, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, I need you to do this, do this, do that. And you don't listen to them because they're your parents. They're always telling you what to do and what not to do. So you can't actually discern or separate what is necessary and optional. So you look to outside sources because they're not telling you like a million things. They're just like, hey, I don't have any skin in the game because I'm not really blood related to you. But you could do this. And then that suddenly becomes inspirational to you or, you know, the, the hypothetical person that I'm talking about. That's why Luffy gravitated to Shanks. It's why Kuzan gravitated to Garp. Like, <laughs> he saw this guy who was really out here doing it. And he wanted more out of life. He wanted to be more. And he saw that there was this guy who wasn't giving up at, at, and wasn't comfortable with the status quo. It's like, that's... That's what I want. So he attached himself to Garp, whether he liked it or not. There's a parallel here to Ohara, where we have a bunch of slaves on this ship. There's a bunch of innocent people that are uh, sailing away from the island. And Pizarro, who you know had a, a pretty great showing here in this particular chapter, wants to destroy the boat. When have we seen this before? Ohara, Sakazuki, taking out all of the uh, people that fled Ohara, right? Hey, we don't know if there's a scholar on board there, so torch them all. Oda drew a very specific panel of Kuzan's reaction to that, and that moment changed him in a big way. And that moment was definitely after the flashback that we're getting here, because Garp is... That, that, that flashback may even be pre-God Valley, for all we know. But the question here is, does Kuzan intervene? Is this the time for Kuzan to be like, I'm not going to let another O'Hara situation happen. These slaves and these marines, like, they don't deserve this. They're going to get away. This is between me and Garp, for whatever reason. And he stops Pizarro, but then continues boxing with Garp. Maybe, but Kuzan should have some sort of a reaction and something to say about this. Maybe he uses his words and stops Pizarro. I don't know. All I know is... We're definitely still on Hachinosu in 1088. There is no way Oda leaves us there in that particular moment because ending on Garp saying that justice will prevail is not a strong enough thing to, to leave and not come back to. So we need to follow up on this. 
We need more of Garp versus Kuzan. I'm hoping we get another flashback. I'm hoping we get more context to all of this. Maybe at the end of 1088, Blackbeard shows up and 1089 is like potentially the death of Garp or at the very least the end of whatever Oda is trying to tell us in this like little Hachinosu section of the story. Back to Egghead in 1090. Oda usually, you know, like on the, the new digit will change the pattern because you know, that's also probably a new volume as well. There were a lot of fun ideas that came out of uh, the stream for this chapter. Uh, we were cooking. We were cooking. A lot of people were asking, you know, who could come in last minute to save and, and help Garp in this situation, help the ship Corona using her negative fruit on the island itself to make Pizarro negative. I thought that that was a lot of fun, and I said the way to show that visually would be fun because Oda's doing this like really awesome thing by having Pizarro emote through the skull on the island. If Pizarro was to turn negative, right? And then the skull starts frowning and, you know, just like, or crying or, or something. I don't know. But, uh, need that. Need that desperately. Obvious answer for me is Sengoku and Sudu really bringing in the full old guard into this particular situation, especially if Blackbeard and the re you know uh, other members of the crew show up. That's where things could get crazy. Why do I mention the, those uh, characters in particular? Because they were sitting down having a conversation about full of lead, and it almost implied that they were going to take action. So if they are on their way, they could pull up just in time to save this ship, or they could pull in in 1088, 1089. Uh, I do still want Sengoku to run into Law and Beppo on his way there. And then we get Law and Beppo playing a role in all of this as well, bringing Law back to Rocky Port, where a lot of the players for Rocky Port are still in play. Let's get that Rocky Port flashback. Need that, Oda, need that. Uh, but that's going to wrap things up, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this chapter. As always, shout out to everybody that supports the channel, the members, everything. It is so helpful, especially with the strike still going on. We are fighting the good fight against those corporations. And, you know, big appreciation, everybody that uh, stands with us on that. That's going to wrap everything up for this particular video. Be on the lookout for more to come. We will be back for 1088 next Sunday. All right. See you guys real soon. Bye. Like, comment, subscribe if you are feeling the vibe. Savage.